Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our Fascinator jewelry tray. Uh, definitely a unique piece for us even, uh, something a little different. Now if you're not familiar with Fascinators, Fascinators is just a fancy name for a decorative hat. Um, and I think that this all originated a uh, long, long time ago, probably um, during like the Baroque era. Uh, but anyway, so we've got the actual tray part. Now I did a little bit of pre-prep because some of it's very repetitive. Um, what we're gonna do, uh, this piece here, it's gonna fold in like this. So the tray's gonna be in here. With the outside, I've got it decorated with these purple panels that I embossed and also inked. Um, so we're gonna glue those on. We can do that now while everything's nice and flat. So I already did this four times. You're gonna do it a total of six. I'm gonna do two of them with you. We'll get the glue going onto our little panels here. And we do want to <clears throat> get these glued nice and center on these pieces so that we have an even border all the way around. We'll do that with the other one as well. And we'll get this one going. There we go. Okay, so you're gonna repeat that four more times. All right, okay, so now that we have those on, you'll notice that each of these little sections has a tiny little triangular tab. You can see it there. And we're gonna use that tab, we're gonna put glue on it and glue it to the inside of the neighboring section to create the, uh, the, dimensional, uh, the dimensional part of this. So I just threw a little bit of glue on there. I kinda dabbed it with my finger to spread it out nice and thin and to make sure that I covered every inch of it and then I'll take it and press it up against the back of the next section, like so, just like that, okay? And you can see what's happening there. So we'll just go around, go around the horn, as they say, and repeat that process on all of these tabs, okay? And we'll get that glued into place, press and hold. Give that a few seconds. There we go. And moving on to the next one here. Just, I did literally three little drops of glue on that little piece, that little tab, and then just get that connected. Okay, peel that back. Next one, <clears throat> pull it up, press it up against the back or the inside of this little section here. I've got a couple more to go. These should dry pretty quick. Um, rule of thumb, and I say this pretty much on every video, uh, when it comes to the glue, less is more. So don't overdo it on the glue, otherwise you're gonna be spending decades, not literally, but figuratively, waiting for that glue to dry. Okay, so I've got the glue on the next tab, pressing it against the back side of this section here. And that just leaves one more. Now this one, we can't really pull it back too much because we might rip it, so maybe place the glue onto the tab from the inside like this. Okay, thin that out with your finger. And then we're gonna take and press that tab up against the inside of that section. And there we go. Okay, perfect. And now, now that we have that done, we have these beautiful decorative pieces that are gonna go on the inside. Now we couldn't do it flat because we needed to get those tabs over first. Because if we put them on first and then fold the tabs, the tabs would kind of hide this design. And we don't want to do that. So we are going to start putting glue on these guys here and get these all into place, nice and centered on the inside, like so. Very straightforward, very simple. And that's going to make the inside look nice and pretty. Okay, so we're going to do this a total of six times. Just like that. Okay, again, making sure that you get it nice and even, nice even border all the way around. You can use this little valley here, right here, that little valley as kind of a visual guide for placement of these pieces. It'll just make it a lot easier to get it nice and centered because literally that valley is right dead center on these pieces here, okay? There we go. Press that into place. You can actually even take it and 
press down like this, if you just kind of angle it. All right, so I've got three more to go. There we go. I've got a feeling that my little Gabby is going to want this piece. My, my Liesl is, uh, Liesl's my, my girlfriend's name. And she is, she's more of a tomboy, actually. So she's not really all about the jewelry and such. But Gabby, Miss Gabby, she's eight years old and she already wants earrings and makeup and all that stuff. I said, girl, you are, you got all your life to do that stuff. You are pretty as you are. You don't need all this stuff. But I guess, you know, jewelry doesn't hurt. So I'm sure she's got some bracelets and necklaces and stuff. She's going to love this little piece, I'm sure. I mean, what girl wouldn't? Okay, here we go. Last one going in place here. Make sure you've got it nice and centered. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so those are all in place. And now we're gonna take this piece and glue this right in the center as well. You wanna to try to maintain uh, an even border along the inside as well. And you know, it just occurred to me that I inked this but I did not ink the inside, and to me it looks kind of weird. So I'm just gonna finish the job here. Um, I've got my little ink applicator, and this is not my typical um, memento ink. I know you guys are probably like, Leo, what are you doing? Why aren't you using memento? Um, just because I actually don't have any turquoise memento, I do, I do have uh, I actually do have turquoise memento ink, but it's chalk based and I try not to use the chalk unless I really have to. I just don't like the look of it. It doesn't blend as well. Uh, but I did use actually on this piece here, which we're going to assemble next, I did use some turquoise chalk ink because it's a bit darker of a color and I really wanted the turquoise to stand out. So I used the chalk because the chalk kind of sits on the surface um, and doesn't really blend into the paper. It doesn't get absorbed, it just sits on the surface. So it's more visible when you use a chalk-based ink. And this is what I just use now as a dye-based ink. Uh, the chalk stuff, well, technically, since it kind of just sits on the surface, it can rub off too. Um, it doesn't really rub off that much, but it can. Just know that. Uh, I think we just did a live stream where I talked about inking. So if you want to learn more about that, check out our YouTube channel and look for that, that live stream. Okay. So we're popping that right in the center, like so. Perfect. Okay. So our tray is coming together. Now we need to assemble the little pole that goes in the middle. Um, it's six sided, obviously. And these are the little panels that are going to go onto each one of the sections here. And you can see that I've already glued down four of them. So you're gonna do this a total of six times. I'm gonna do it twice along with you here. Okay, and try to just get it nice and centered, even border all the way around, and then take a look and see where you're actually starting it at the bottom and try to keep them kind of on the same plane. I've got one that's a little bit lower and you can't look at all six sides at the same time. So you're not really gonna notice it, um, but just do your best to make it as accurate as you can. Okay, so there's that one. Get it nice and centered, Leo. Do it, do it right. And there we go. Okay, so I've got all six in place. Um, you've got a series of tabs here and some tabs here. This long tab is what we're gonna use to join this piece and make it all wrapped around in one solid little, little pole where we're gonna hang our little hat when we're done. So I've got some glue on there. I'm gonna take my finger and spread that glue nice and thin all the way out to the very edge. And you can technically, just take this and grab the other end and pop it right on nice and flat. Since it's symmetrical, um, while we're gluing this together, we can just totally put it down flat. You'll see once I pop it out, how it's dimensional. This is the seam right here. So continue to press that down until it's fully set. There we go. Okay, and now we're gonna take and, oh, uh, you know what, let's actually, yeah, we're gonna glue the top first. So we've got a total of five tabs up here. And I'm just gonna do a few dots on each one and then I'm gonna take my finger to thin it out and spread it out onto the entire surface of each of those uh, five little tabs. 
We're going to close this up. I'm going to take and focus on getting it aligned with this side first. Make sure you get it out to the very edge. You can actually smush that down so it sits on your table. And then if you need to kind of give one of the corners a little bit of a nudge, you can do that. I want to make sure that it's nice and aligned on all uh, six sides, actually. Well, one's already, one side's already anchored, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, keep holding that. If you want, you can flip it over, grab a long dowel, and you can push down from the inside to help the rest of that tab make good contact, just like that. Okay, let's take a look, and that looks pretty darn good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we can flare these out like so, and we're gonna pop that on our table, take the tray, and bring it down like so. Bring it down as far as it'll go, like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue these tabs down. So flip that over. Whoops, way too much glue there. Flip it over, throw a little bit of glue on it, and then push it down onto your surface, and then press down. I'm gonna make sure that it's all the way uh, let me see here. That actually doesn't look very centered to me. I'm going to pull that off real quick. And let's see here. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, so uh, the reason I did that was because I'm going to throw some more glue on there. And I'm going to flip that up. And I'm just going to nudge this a little bit, make sure that it's nice and centered, and then press down. Okay, so there's that tab. Now I'm going to, this tab's down, I'm going to go over to this side and I'll throw a little bit of glue on that tab, push it over, and then press down right here. Okay, so these two tabs are in place and we can go over to this one, or any one at this point, doesn't matter, and flip that over and then press down. Okay, so we just did this one, we're gonna go over to this one, a little bit of glue, fold it over, and press down. And that just leaves these two. You can just do these together. And fold that over, fold that over, press down. There we go. Okay. All right. So that's that. Now that doesn't look very pretty. So what we're going to do is take this piece and cover it up. You got a nice little liner piece that's going to go right on there. And I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to apply the glue to the sur to this surface. It's just easier to hold. Okay, I'm going to go kind of heavy with the glue here because I'm going to spread that out to the very edge. And I'm going to throw a little bit along the inside here. Maybe one more thin line around the perimeter and then just start spreading that out to the edge. Like so. I don't know if you can hear that wind out there. It is howling. It's kind of scary. Okay, and just line that up as accurately as you can, nice and centered. Okay, and this will also help keep it more sturdy. You can then flip it over and press down, and we'll take a look at the very edges to make sure that everything looks nice and flush. If it doesn't, we can just use our little painting tool or method to help get that nice and flush. Okay, but that actually turned out pretty darn good. Wow, okay, I'll take it. Okay, plus I don't think anyone's really gonna see that. Uh, but there's the tray, that's where all the jewelry's gonna go, and then we've got a nice little pedestal there for our fascinator, which we're going to assemble now. So let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so you'll notice that we have a little tab on here, but we're not actually gonna fold the tab. Uh, it looks like a tab, but it's kind of not. Uh, it's really just markers to help you with the alignment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and bring it over right on top of this section and match it up with those little score marks. And that's kind of going to give it that, that cone shape. Okay. Um, and I, again, I don't want you to, <clears throat> I don't want you to fold or, or, or bend this at the score marks. There's actually not score marks there. So I threw a little bit of glue on that section, but I also, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this and spread that glue out to the very edge like so. Okay. And then we're going to take this and just grab it and line that up right up to the little score marks there. Okay, now while you're doing this, 
make sure that a second here make sure that I've got that right okay and then I'm gonna actually take this and push it down on my surface so that I can really get it to stick okay and there we go okay so then you can see how this inside looks nice and symmetrical and these little scallops here should meet uh, like that as long as you've got it lined up with those little score marks you're gonna be in good shape okay um, next what we're gonna do is we got to build this little piece here okay and this is gonna ultimately it's gonna be kind of uh, like dome shaped so while we're actually gluing this together okay um, I'm gonna start off by putting glue there's a tiny tiny little tab there and I am gonna try to glue it it's possible that it might be too small but Technically, nothing's too small. So we're going to start with that tiny little tab, and we're going to tuck it behind the neighbor and press that up against the inside of the neighboring piece. I'll show you what that looks like from the inside in just one second, once I'm sure it's got a good hold. Okay, give me a second there. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's there. Okay, and then we'll take and fold back the second tab in the sequence there, throw a little bit of glue on it like that. If you can spread it out to the edge, that's great. If not, it's okay. And press that up against the inside, just like that. Make sure it's nice and aligned. There's like a little natural curve that's happening there. And then that takes us to the last little tab here. Throw a little bit of glue on that guy and line that up with the bottom. Should be nice and flush. And you can see how it's kind of, you know, it's it's definitely curved. There's a little bit of a curve to it. It's not, not just completely flat. All right, so we've got two sections glued together. We're just going to repeat that process for the rest of these sections. Start with the tiny little tab there. Tuck it behind the neighboring piece. I'm using my middle finger back there to press against that, against my thumb. So I'm kind of squeezing it between my thumb and my middle finger like that and just press and hold. Don't use a lot of glue here uh, because you will spend a long time waiting for this to dry. With these little tiny little tabs, you, you literally only need, you know, just like a very thin, uh, a thin layer of glue on there for it to stick. Okay, so I'm on the second tab now. I'm gonna take that and press it up against the back of this section. And again, there's a little bit of a curve there it's not straight, so just kind of follow that curve so everything is, you know, more round than straight. And then down to the last little tab and press that up against the inside of the neighboring piece. All right, you can see what we're kind of creating here, okay? All right, so we've got to do that a few more times. Again, next section here, I'm going to start with the tiny little guy here. Now, if you're feeling adventurous and brave, you can try doing two at a time. I'm gonna try it. I don't recommend it, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, hold that. And move down to the next one. Yeah, you technically could. I, I, I've done this a million times with projects that have a ton of tabs. And um, typically because all these tabs are so small and we're applying a very thin layer of glue. Most of the time I give it like one or two presses, maybe just a press and a hold for five seconds. And it takes, cause I'm really applying a lot of pressure here. It's really getting that glue into the fibers of the paper. And you can see that it's already holding. Okay. All right. So got two more sections that need to be glued down. I'm just gonna be cautious here and just do one tab at a time. Okay. And get that connected nice and lined up. Press and hold. There's not a lot of surface area on that little tab to hold, but you can definitely, you know, get the tip of your finger on it. Okay, moving down to the next tab. It's been a while since we've done something round like this, I guess. Um, got a little too much glue on there and I don't want to try to force it. So I'll just take a scrap piece of paper and use that to thin it out and spread it out again, giving it a little bit of a curve 
as I press the next tab into place. Okay, that should do it. And the last one, nice and easy. Okay, and again, you had to give it a little bit of a push in to maintain that curvature. Nice, nice and, uh, nice and strong little push and it's ready to go. Okay, so now here, when we glue this last section in place, try to make sure that the tabs are already inside. Otherwise, we may, uh, you don't wanna have to try to rip this thing apart to get those tabs back in later on. And I'm gonna do two tabs here. I'm gonna use my scrap piece of paper to kind of dab and spread that glue onto those tabs. Okay. And find that little tiny tab back there by just feeling for it. Press that up against the inside. And I'll do the second one. Press that up against the inside. And that just leaves one more tab here. And you can see how quickly this is going. This is not magic. It really does go this quick if you keep that glue sparse and thin. You don't need a lot. Okay, and there we go. So yeah, this one's this little section here is kind of a... Uh, that's not the most fun to put together. It's pretty tedious, but there's not much more of this sort of tedious work to do here. Okay, so I'm gonna do the next two tabs on this last section. I'm gonna use my scrap piece of paper to thin that glue out. And again, kind of feeling for that tab, pressing it up against the inside of its neighbor, bringing that in, second tab. So I've worked my way down to that middle tab, press and hold. Just like that. And then we'll flip this over so I can see the inside. And I'll just apply my glue to the last little tab there. Grab my scrap piece of paper, thin that out, spread it out, and voila. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, so now, now that we have this piece built, we're gonna take this section and we're gonna flare these tabs out, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece that we just built, pop it on top, and we're gonna glue the tabs to the inside of this piece. So what I wanna do is anchor this first. So I'm gonna begin by applying glue to just one of these tabs. Okay, again, I'm gonna thin that out with my finger, and then flare it back up. Take one of these, line it up so it's nice and flush with the surface of this guy. Make sure it's centered and press and hold. Okay, you can take a look from the inside to see what that looks like. And unfortunately, we can't really use our table as leverage without damaging this thing, so just be, be careful. Okay, so we've got it anchored, you can see. All right, now, this is the side that we glued down. We're gonna go over to the side opposite of that side. So it's this side here. And grab our glue, apply. Like so, just like that, and then fold it over. Take a look at it from the outside, again, to make sure that it stays nice and flush and that you're not seeing any of that, that tab peeking out there. There we go. So the next one's in place. I'm just kind of pushing here and then pushing here like that. You can see where the two are making contact. Just because I want to squeeze that glue in there, really get it to to sit. Okay, so now we can move over to another tab. Doesn't matter which one, just pick one. And then fold it over onto the inside of this piece here. Again, if you need to give it a little bit of a push down to keep it nice and flush, then feel free to do that. Just pressing down here like that. Now this is the one I just finished, so I'm gonna go over opposite of where I was just at. Throw a little glue on there. Thin that out if necessary, if you maybe got a little bit too much on there and push that up against the inside. Again, kind of looking at it from the outside to make sure that we don't have any of that tab showing. Okay, this one is, uh, this is a little bit different, but we'll be okay. All right, so that just leaves two more tabs. We can flare these out and get your glue on both of them. You just do both of them right now. Okay, thin that out and press that in. Take a look at it from the outside. That looks pretty good. And then the last one here on this side, press that down. 
And there we go. Okay. All right. So that is coming together. All right, now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and this piece is gonna get glued down like this. It should meet perfectly in the center. And right where the seam is, we want that to meet with the other seam, okay? Just like that. And it is gonna be important to get some glue right up here so that sits nice and flush as well. Otherwise you might see little gaps up there and you don't want that. Okay, so let's start. Um, and I have a feeling that this one's gonna need a little bit of cleanup just because there's so many important areas that we need to keep flush. And there's such a large surface area that don't, don't feel bad if you get it on and it's just not, you know, sitting nice and flat the first time around. Uh, this is quite a lot to ask to get it to all sit nice and flat. So don't worry about it. Okay, and I want some here on the inside and then right out to the edge. I need to spread that out. Let's get some of that over there. We can, again, always clean this up if necessary. Uh, and again, make sure that when you put this down, we're matching up the seam. Here we go. And just get that right onto the seam. If you have need to give it a little squeeze, you can use your thumbs and your fingers to kind of bring those seams together. Okay, and then kind of work your way around up here as well to push that down. I'm hitting the little scallop areas too. Make sure that those are sitting nice and flush. And I have a feeling that I think the one part that's gonna give me a problem here is right up here. But again, we can take our little scrap piece of paper and just clean that up. It will not be difficult at all. And that actually worked out and was easier than I thought it would be. I thought this would be a little difficult, but it wasn't luckily. Okay, just keep pressing down, make sure everything dries before we let it loose. Okay. Yep, that's nice. Okay. Well, that worked out beautifully. And again, these little areas in the center, um, I'm not too thrilled with the little gap there. So I'm just gonna take a little scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very edge of it. Make sure you don't have any on the, any on the back because you can literally slide this right on the surface and it won't get any glue uh, on that surface. And I just wanna poke a little bit of glue right in there if possible. There we go, just like that and press that down so it's nice and flush right there. I don't wanna see any gaps, okay? And I'm gonna grab a, a fresh scrap here. I always, when I, uh, after I cut things with my Cricut and I have some scrap paper, I always cut them into little rectangles like this and I just keep them in my drawer because I know I'm gonna be using them and they're very helpful. Okay, so just paint a little bit of glue right on there, you can literally pop it right on the surface and you let the surface kind of guide you since there's no glue on the back of this. Okay, and then just press that down. Okay, and you know what? I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna be okay. The rest of them aren't even that bad. Okay, so there's that. Well, that actually was easier than I thought it would be. Okay, all right, so the hat looks great. Now, I'm just gonna finish it off by assembling, uh, we've got a little bow and we also have some little feathers. Of course, uh, I did take and ink these, ink to them. Now you'll notice that on these feathers, we do have a series of score marks on them. Okay, so what you can do is take and just kind of fold at the score marks to make this dimensional. It's a little different because there's almost like little sections but if you start slowly and start folding at the score marks, eventually it will all get a lot easier to fold. I've got glue all over my fingers here. Okay, and then once you really get it moving, you can then take and really start to squeeze it even more. Okay, and we just wanna give this a little extra dimension. Okay, this part up here is a little a little difficult to fold. I would just kind of leave it. Well, let me use my table 
There we go. And then I can fold it even more. Just like that. Okay. Uh, this one also has some score marks, so go ahead and just slowly start kind of folding right at those score marks. Okay. And then as the paper releases that tension, it'll be a lot easier to really fold these, okay? And then you can kind of unfold them a little bit. You don't want them too folded, but that looks great. You can see how the light kind of hits that and creates, you know, highlights and shadows. That's the whole idea with, you know, training paper and, and kind of manipulating it to make it look dimensional. Um, light has a lot to do with, you know, the appearance of something and it being dimensional. Uh, where a flat surface usually, you know, the, the light hits it almost equally on all parts, but because this is folded, it really creates that nice dimension. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, we've got four different little feathers here. So again, just make sure you go through and fold everything at the score marks. If you have some nice inks and you want to ink your feather, I would do that. Why not? Okay, so there's that, and let me make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so this is gonna be our backmost layer. We're gonna take and glue this down like so, and then we're gonna glue that down like that. Okay, so it should look like that. We'll throw a little bit of glue on the back of this guy, like so, we can thin that out, so we don't have to wait forever for it to dry. And just match up the little rectangles here. Not quite, almost a square. <clears throat> Press that down. And then we'll take our last one here. Throw a little bit of glue on the back. And get that in place. Okay, so now this, all this needs now is a little bow. Uh, also, this guy here, uh, this looks interesting, doesn't it? Uh, take a pretty thin dowel, and what I'm going to do is just take it and grab it at the tip and just start curling it. Just curl it towards you. And the thinner the dowel, the more pronounced your curl is going to be. Okay, and then just release it. Okay, and if you want, actually, um, if you want to just kind of curl the tips so that the tip just stays curled, you could do that too. This is your project. This is your fascinator. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm going to curl it about halfway and then just kind of release it a little bit. Uh, you can also curl it like that. And it's just like curling your hair, I think. <laughs> I've never done that, so I've watched people do it though. Okay, there we go. And we'll do this one here and just start curling. Just curl around the dowel nice and tight. Can even do this. Just don't rip it. This is pretty, uh, pretty gentle little section. There we go. That looks cute. I'll just curl it around my dowel and then release. Same with this. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking it and placing it between my finger and the dowel, lifting it 90 degrees, and then running it through, and that kind of creates a little curl there. And then I can just curl the tip, so you can get kind of. Kind of fancy with your uh, your little guys here. Okay, there we go. So now this is actually going to go. This is going to go behind our little feathers. So take and apply some glue right to this little rectangle area there, and press this right onto the back. Should match up perfectly. Okay. Now once we're once this is all set. You could take and kind of flare these, make sure they're going over so that they're all visible and not kind of getting stuck behind the feathers, okay? All right, so all that's left to do now is, uh, well, we just need to put, uh, actually, you know what, hold on a second. I'm gonna flare this out a little bit more. They're kind of too curled. I'm gonna loosen it up a bit. That's fine. Okay. All right, let's make a bow. So we're gonna take the bow, and this is, a, I think, a three-quarter three quarter inch, no, I mean, two or three-eighth inch dowel. 
I'm going to take and place the one of the loops between my finger and the dowel, lift it up 90 degrees, and run the dowel through. Do the same thing on the other side, like so. And you'll notice that the ends of each of these loops has a rectangle as well. We're going to put some glue on the inside part of one of these. You can thin that glue out if you want, not totally necessary, but and then bring it in and match it up with the little rectangle that's in the center of our bow. Okay, just make sure it's nice and aligned with the other little rectangle there. Now I did hit this with um, some embossing. This is like a tiny dot. And I'm starting to see some vertical lines there, but that's actually maybe okay. All right, so we'll grab the other end, throw a little bit of glue right on there. Bring it in, match it up with the center, and press that down and hold. Give that a few moments to set. Okay, next, we're going to take this little piece here. I'm going to put it right on top, nice and centered. And we're going to take and push that over and just fold it over. Okay, on one side. Throw a little bit of glue on that side that I just folded over and take the other side and fold it right on top of where I placed that glue and press and hold. Okay, there we go. So there's our bow. We do also have a tail to go with it. And what I'm gonna do with this tail is I'm gonna train this. Uh, starting here, actually, uh, I'm gonna take and train this down first, like that. And then I'm gonna take this and train it up. Okay, so it's got like kind of an S shape. So all I did was, and I'm going to do the opposite on the other side, placing the dowel between my finger and the tail, bringing it up 90 degrees, running it through, flipping it over, putting it about halfway, bringing it up 90 degrees, running it through. Okay, so it's kind of going all over the place, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now I'm going to take and put some glue on the back of this guy. The back is where the seam is, where we join that one section. And then we're going to get this nice and centered on our tail. Make sure you can't see the top of the, the back of the tail, this part right here. Hide it behind the bow, but try to keep it mostly flush and press and hold. Okay, and then behind that, we're gonna glue this guy and then we're gonna foam square that onto the hat and that's gonna do it. I have to actually go buy some jewelry tomorrow because we don't really have a lot of jewelry here. I'm gonna Need some props, okay? All right, so again, last little section. Throw a little bit of glue on this purple. And just match that up with the little rectangle there. Take a look at it from the front, make sure everything looks good. Oops, keep that nice and centered. And let's see here. Should be nice and flush at the bottom, there we go. Okay, and I can actually just press that down on my table, give it some extra leverage, some extra force, and there it is. And then what I'm gonna do actually, what I would suggest doing is when we put this on here, let's put it on the area where we have the seam so we can kind of cover up the seam, okay? So I'm gonna use a foam square right there. Uh, let me see, is this big one too big? Oh no, it's fine. Okay, so I got a foam square on there. And we're gonna put it sort of near the base of this section here so that it kind of sits like that. Okay, and there we go. If you want, you can kind of curl this up a little bit more just so it's kind of sticking up. And there's our beautiful fascinator hat. And that's gonna sit right on there. If you want, you can kind of use a little foam square and kind of you know, tilt it over to an angle well, that's going to actually do it for this. Um, and I don't think we're actually, you know what? Yeah. So uh, to finish this off, we'll probably just throw some little rhinestones here on the center of the bow. I'm trying to think to see if there's anything else that was. Oh, yeah. And then also um, just down here, right here where this little valley is, we'll throw some little, uh, probably some gold pearls there maybe or some lime rhinestones. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but that's pretty much it as far as um, as far as other embellishments go. Cute little piece, goes together pretty quick. I think we did this in about 40 minutes. Um, great little gift. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. 
Uh, while you're there, hit that bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new uh, bundle freebie or if we happen to go live, which we've been doing more and more of lately. So do that. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I would love to see it and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group or you can just type in this little URL that you see here at the bottom of your screen. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.